Hello everybody. Here we go, ready with either side I have my bar. Okay, so we have your chairs, which you'll take from one side to the other when it comes to the workout. If you're tuning in right now then, it is going to be bring your inner ballerina to your bar. The bar is because the bars are open on 4th of July onwards. Um, so I'm having a little bit, little bit of a play on what's going on in the country. Good morning, Margaret. Great to see you. I'll remind people what we're doing today. We're going to bring out a ballerina, however in, um, what's, what's the word, inflexible you may feel, or awkward in terms of movement flow. We are doing the inner baller ballerina moment of this workout. There's nothing new in some ways, because when we used to teach bar here, um, the sequence I'm putting together is a classical kind of Pilates bar workout. So it just hasn't been done to the degree that we're going to do it today. Good morning, Donna and Mana. You brought with you your inner ballerina, okay? With flowing arms and agility through the limbs. I appreciate a lot of our movement patterns that we do in Pilates are a little bit more kind of angular, strong, and range of movement around the joint for stability. This workout, particularly with your arms, is going to try and create a little bit more of a flow. It doesn't really matter how awkward you feel. It just matters that you have a bit of a play and free up the shoulder, because actually during the whole of the main body of this workout, your shoulder needs to be a bit more open and relaxed rather than aggressive. Good morning, Helen. I hope you've got your inner ballerina. You will need a chair, and your chair will go from one end of your mat, one, from, when we've done one side, back to the other end for the other side. There are two sides, um, and two repeats as it were, to, to this workout programme. Be ready to be hot, be ready to be sweaty. The rules still apply, good morning Sarah too. Apply that if any part of what you're doing, hello Diane, goes into your sacred iliac or across this area of the hip we talk about, the, kind of, or the Nicoline scenario, that means that the position you're in isn't accurate. So find the accuracy or leave the exercise to one side. The truth about this workout would be that if you're struggling with hip pain, generally because of wear and tear and needing surgery, that's the category of certain client base right now, then you may not want to do this as a workout for you. Most, for most of you, it's perfect. Um, have a go, by all means. Hello, Ken, and hello, Susan. Ready for your inner ballerina, I hope, Ken. Two twos are ready. Nice and pink is Ken's. The, the workout you will do at the bar, for someone like um, a newer client, you may not have done any bar work with us because it's not the journey we've done with you, but everyone knows that way back we actually had pure bar classes, um, and then we decided that actually, well I decided, I thought the technique was so rubbish I banned them. Whichever ever way you look at it, because of all the classes we've been doing, I brought the bar back today as a traditional bar, with a traditional classical kind of put together movement patterning that takes you through parallel, Good morning, Janet. Takes you into turnout, takes you into the wide second positions and into the curtsy lunges. So be ready with your tutu and your leotard at the bar with your inner ballerina. I make no apology for the fact that I am far from a ballerina. I leave that to Miss Lulue and in the past to Grace. Um, but I have the ability to create shapes and those shapes I'll try and um, make appear to be fluid and flowy. Find the best fluid flowing form of yourself that you can, irrespective of any dance training whatsoever. I think we're about ready to start. This is video number 63. I'm looking to have a kind of new series. I can't decide on the title, um, but this um, bar will definitely make up some kind of a new series because I can't go on with the days going beyond 20, which the previous series lasted. Good morning, Jane. So, tutus at the ready. I'm going to start, um, make sure you start facing me and that the equipment that you've got, you can actually see yourself in full um, frontal view. When I cue the legs, I'll make sure that your leg nearest the screen, once we're facing this way, is the cue that I give because that will make the most sense of you learning. Stand with your feet so that they're naturally a little bit hip width apart. And get the breathing going already. And Tom's here. Tom is the ballerina. He is the girl's side of my life. Once you're in your standing shape, put your hand on the chair or the surface. If you have a choice, have something about hip. If it's a bit high, just have to have a very bent elbow. You've got to inhale to take your arm up. 
and a breath out to find the flow into a side bend. Breathe in to come back up again, bring your arms to your side and breathe out to flow forwards, rib cage bending, hip bend and rolling back up. Straight into your side bend with the breath out, standing up with the breath in, straight into the forwards flowing bend with the breath out. That's a slight bend of the rib cage part of the spine. Find what feels comfortable to you. Remember, we've done all of this training saying that you bend the spine through the ribs to the neck. Um, certainly side bending is always last rib to the neck, to the ear, to the jawline. When it comes to forwards bending, you can do much more of a generalist flex, um, but making still the greatest emphasis on bending your rib cage because that's the stiffest part of this. We'll do one more of these sequences. So exhale to forwards bend. I do a bit of a squat with this. Inhale to stand up and breath out to achieve the side bend, opening up and stretching through the oblique. From that position there, take your feet a little bit wider. When I say a little bit wider, think of the outside of your hip bones, you're still in parallel. And now we go to the more traditional squat position. This is the place where I'm introducing your arms. The whole idea of your arm is that it gives you a workout one arm at a time. As you find the squat, and you know how to squat, so try and do it as you know, no, not out of the rules in terms of your Pilates. Use your inhale to go down and your exhale to come back up. Think about your arm again. Your arm is flowing forwards with a slight um, bend at the elbow, so if you've got the crook of the elbow, just relax. And as you pull your arm backwards, think of the upper back, and as you float forwards, it's like your shoulder joint just um, hinges here. But as you come back, you're pulling everything with the upper back muscles. Inhale down. Exhale, push through the feet. Inhale, send your sit bones back. Breathe out, push the ground away. Good morning, Linda. Inhale and exhale back up. We're going to do two more just here. The general warming up as we um, find our inner self as a ballerina. The next time you come up, stay, and you're ready now to take your feet wider. So already the arms should be aching through the shoulder and upper back. You're now in a turnout position. Keep the hand to the um, chair. Keep it wherever you can manage the position and then you're going straight into your hip openers. Ideally, and it is an ideal because you know when you're young, it's fine. You can keep a really flat back, whatever, whatever, whatever. But as you get older, your existing posture, your genetic posture makes some things less possible. So as we go in and out of this wide position, it's called second position for the ballet world, as you're going up and down in here, if you're able to do it with a straight spine and a flat back, then do so. If you're not, then keep that traditional bit of a hinge at the hip, particularly if you're a low dose person, in other words, increase of lower spine extensors, then you can take it into the hinge more. Whichever way, you'll know it's right because it'll feel great. No ageism. Oh, I think there's loads of ageism going on right now. We're going down as we breathe in and up as we breathe out. Stay down this next time and create as much of a strength and posture. So let me talk to you about your posture as you're here. Your posture should be strong. The whole ballet type movement patterning is to strengthen your posture, okay? So with that in mind then, you're going to go down deeper and back. Your arm is now opening and closing. The other shoulder is relaxed, but the symmetry is still there in your form. As you go down and up. Next time you go down, stay, keep your arm out of reach. Now pick up one heel and put it back down. Pick up the other heel. Whilst doing this, no change happens here at the pelvis. You know the rules. It's the knee that pushes up and out and the heel, the ankle rolls and the ankle goes back down. You're pulling your thigh bones out wide to open the hip and open the adductor muscles. Keeping the pelvic floor drawn up through the um, pelvic area and the connection through to your trunk by keeping the breathing muscles. Ideally keep your chin in, although I'm really aware that because we're all looking at screens, we tend to do the opposite. Um, we can remedy that once you're back in the studio. Keep both heels down now. Good morning, Annie. And here we go. Here we go. Breathe. Shrink and hollow. Breathe. And breathe. You're now waking everything up to openness, core connection. Shoulders are relaxed, very deliberate positioning of the upper body, and you can push all the way up to stand. 
from here start back here. This is the most complex choreography in that moment now. You're still in turnout. Push that leg and point it. You're going to lead it back to where you've just been. Land. Pull it back to where I've just shown you. So we're going to go down and pull back. Down and pull back. The aim would be legs are strong. Already the feeling of the leg that's moving in space gets a workout through the inner thigh as you draw the legs together and return. Just do me three more. It's strong and strong. Both legs working. Symmetry as you land, point. Last time before we add to this. So point and pull, take it behind you. I've leant forwards. And now do your curtsy lunge. I've now got a straight spine, upper back working, legs in turnout. Come up, point, go to your plie. Get the idea? Straight, strong, and curtsy, and up, strong. <sighs> Breathing regularly as you get the body moving. It wouldn't matter if you hinged here and you hinged here. Okay, when I say hinge, it's always going to be the hip. If you can keep a relatively flat space in the spine. Hello, Sarah. Plie. Curtsy, lunge. Point. Plie. Point. And send your body backwards. The turnout, staying all the while. You've got one more of those little sequences, which is there. Down. Reach. Now stay here. Find your position. Everything's square. And you're lowering down and up. Now your back leg is loaded. The inner thighs are pulling wide. And you're feeling the burn, I believe, through the quad. And you need to breathe deep in and out. Whatever surface you're on, don't let it distort your alignment. I mean, ideally, really, my hand needs to be down here, but I'm using a ladder bow. Now we change. We come from here up to here. And you're going back to here. And you're coming up to here. See the control. Go down into your curtsy lunge and pull up. Now, if turnout's a real issue for you, I believe you can just go parallel and poise. But if you want to get that inner ballerina and your hips allow you to, then this is what you're doing. You're going down and up. Adding the arm down and up. Or you're saying straight back, down and up. I'm illustrating that it really doesn't matter. It's more that it corrects your posture rather than just looks a bit like a joke. All right, the next time you're here, stay. So staying here, center the body. Core connect, make your pelvis level. You're gonna take this position into what they call attitude. Now the only attitude I've ever known is a dog of determination attitude. This is an attitude of a leg, which means the leg stays bent. Remember this from the way back in the days when we did our bath stuff. You're going to lower that bent leg down, exhale, pull it up. Keep this going. Now your standing leg can't be locked out. It's got a bit of turnout going on the quad, the thigh bone, and this leg's lifting and lowering and it's a marginal turnout. The leg stays bent, ideally the toes pointed as best you know how, and your stabilizing muscles are working really hard. Exhale, lift, inhale and lower. Breathing out to lift, um, become aware of the crown of the head, the lengthening up to the ceiling, and the refusing to give up against gravity. So you're constantly reaching to gravity. The next time this leg comes down, leave it down by your ankle of your standing leg. Bend both legs, and then extend the legs and reach. Both legs come down, staying in turnout, up that squat, exhale and push. You can keep a flat back if you want, whichever way, all that matters, I'm going to look at the right screen, 
is that you keep this alignment chin to chest. Now the workload on your standing leg, right up into your global area of the glute, is really dominant. Because I'm a horrible person, you're going to stay this time here. Stay, breathe. Now lower the leg and lift. And lift. It's the tiny bit of turnout. Keep the chin in, the crown of the head reaching. Don't look out at the knee people. That would be Diane, Margaret, Thomas. You've got to keep the knee soft. It can't be locked. The standing glute area, back of the thigh, absolutely working for you. Two more. Last one. And let that go. Wriggle and squiggle. Move your chair to the other end of your mat. Once you're at the other end of the mat, have your feet into a normal parallel. I'll just explain what's happening. For those of you that, for those of you that are ready to move your chairs to the other end, you're obviously going to go to your side bends again. Take a breather, hands in place, breathe in, breathe out, and side bend. Breathe in, breathe out, and forwards bend. Include the rib cage in that flowing bend of the spine. Inhaling, exhale. Remember the side bend is rib cage only. Inhaling, exhale. Rounding the spine nicely, as in nice big, it feels pleasant and not awkward. Over you go, and down you flow. Rolling back up. As you go over, maybe look down and add a little bit of a neck influence. And as you roll, back you go, inhaling up and last sequence. Remember the arm is deliberately working to stabilize through the shoulder and find a little bit of upper body connection. Staying this time aligned. Take your feet a bit wider than your hip bones and as I said, they're not turned out, you're just a bit wider. Organize your clothing because there's nothing worse than dropping off your body. Are you ready for your squats? So you start your squats and the influence of pulling your chin in. You know how to squat people so you don't actually have to do anything at this point. In terms of your arms my encouragement would be as you breathe in and your bottom goes down and backwards flow your arm either forwards or sideways. Whichever way it can't become the big deal. It has to be more of an intuitive movement pattern. The significant movement right now is your squat. So breathing in to go down, breathing out to press that floor away. Inhaling, the body hinges, exhaling, and you're finding a rhythm and a flow with both the breath and the trunk. All right, the next time you come back up, you're gonna stay up and you're ready for your wide turnout. In other words, second position. So they tell me second position wide is what this is. Are you ready? You can take it into your wide and stand. If you want, you can open your arm out and pull it in. Opening out and back in. Inhale to open and breath out to close. Opening and closing. Keep this going and remember the rules. Feet are obviously level with each other. Use your mat as part of your alignment. And the knees pull out over the toes and the thighs pull out backwards of the ankle in your mind. Get rhythm of the breathing and of the movement down and up. We'll stay down there for this one, so staying down. Your other rules are, just to make sure I'm straight, the other rule is if it's too intense for you being straight back, then take it into a bit of a hinge, which is what you see me doing. Now that I'm down here, I'm going to play with my ability to have a really open hinge here. And we're going to stay as deep as we can, relax through the shoulders, pick up your heel, breathe, push it back down. Exhaling, you lift. Remember in this positioning, the pelvis stays absolutely still. My body isn't going up and down, I'm simply pushing my knee out, pulling my heel down. Pick up my heel, push my heel down. Breathing, elegance and um, length in the upper thoracic spinal area. Pelvic floor navel to spine here, keep going. And then people keep both heels down and you deepen. Deepen, I had my foot against the bar end, which was not nice. As this deepening happens, what are the rules? You pull your thigh bones open. 
You keep the weight to the outsides of your feet. You keep your ankles pulling backwards. And the breath, as you pull your knees open, ask everything from the inner thigh, right away from the pubic bone to the inside of the knee, to lengthen for you. Sometimes to offer a bit of a push can assist with everything that you want to happen here. The inner thigh, the inside of the knee strength, the whole red fire area, I can tell you I'm on fire. It's my third time at this today. Go, and here we go. Ready for the point of connection. You're now totally switched on. You go point, plie, remember this, and pull back to strong, and repeat. Point, plie, and pull back to strong, and plie. It's probably better to hold on because you're going to get a better pullback, so I need to remind myself to hold on. This leg pulls back. This leg reaches your plie. This leg pulls back. The leg, in time and space, airborne and strong. If you're doing it as requested, then the leg starts to feel lots of activity as it strengthens to pull back to the standing leg and that's really what you're aiming to achieve. Two more, remember this movement pattern. One more, and hold. We now take it backwards to the lunge, thigh bones stand out, pull it out, and reach it into your plie. You can take it backwards to your lunge, to curtsy lunge, point the foot, and reach it out. Pull back, curtsy lunge. You can either hinge or stay upright. Take the leg, reach it, and into your plie. Pull the leg, reach it back, sit into it. Reach it, send it wide. Lengthen through the trunk, and back you go. Breathe systematically, deep, thinking through the leg. Pelvis stays true. It's your last sequence. Point, plie. Come on, we can do this. Hold it back and here we'll stay. Now you're in your curtsy. Get everything level as we stay here. Thighs are pulling open out. Remember I've said you can have a straight back. Your load is through your back leg. And you need to know I'm feeling it. The Accurate activation is straight down from here all the way to the inside of the knee as you turn out. The turning out of both thighs, working muscles that go right up into your pelvic area. So keep the crown of everything. I am definitely feeling this, people. Make sure the feelings you're getting are down the thighs and not into your lower back. It's your last one. And here we take you to here. Stay. Have a moment. Notice your alignment. Breathe. You're going to go here and up to here. Breathe. Curtsy lunge. Pick up. Curtsy lunge. Pelvis stays level. Chest stays level. And pick up. And I hope you're sweating. I've actually got a big fan on. <laughs> I can still feel life trickling down my back. All right, we have two more. Curtsy, pick up. And curtsy and pick up. That can be an option, you know. Last time, curtsy, pick up and put your hand on your hip. Back to base, free up that foot from that um, thigh. I'm going to turn so you can see me a bit better. You're in turn out, neither leg locked out. The attitude is what we do now. So attitude, apparently, um, for you dancers, for us uneducated, it simply means a bent knee, a bent leg. As you lower and lift, you lower to the floor space at the front of your mat in your mind. So as you're thinking down there, that um, lowering in the direction of the edge of the mat and picking up from is where you want to be. Use your breath out to lift. Breath out, lift. Remember, if you connect your pelvic floor, along with the pushing the ground way through the heel, you will get everything you need to know. 
now the side bottom on the standing leg is telling you something about where it belongs. It's getting stronger, filling with blood and activation. Now, the next time you pull this leg down, pull it down to the um, ankle of your said other leg. Remember, I'm facing the screen, Tanya. And now you'll take both legs and bend them. And as you push up, both legs straighten. Both legs bend and both legs straighten. You've got that attitude leg in turnout still. I'm trying to show by um, turning slightly towards you. There's this turnout, think of the knee staying turned out as you bend and straighten. You either hinge bend, or if you're a natural bendy wendy, you can flat back bend as long as you don't tuck under, because that isn't it either. All right, it has to stay in your side bottom and not in your sacrum, and we stay here. I am dying. All right, then we lower and lift. Lower and lift. Keeping the turnout on both legs. The harder you're finding it, people, F will unload you because if it ignites and activates your core, you get this contribution and your posture stays beautifully against gravity. So whilst you're getting your legs, your side bottom, your inner thigh to inner knee, two more. Last time, and let that go. Okay, next position. Come over to your, uh, well bring it, no actually, you know what, you're having to move around too much. Stay where you are, I'll do it here. Stay where you are then, a more familiar position, although well, I'm going to make sure I can see you clearly. You're standing at your bar, you're parallel with the legs and the legs are tight together. Core connect your breathing and then pick up to tiptoes. Once you're on your toes, you're going to lower down, the knees go in the direction of your chair and stand up. Inhale, pull those thighs so tight together. Breath out, pull the thighs together as though you're trying to super glue them from the pubis to the inner knee. If you're not sure what I'm saying, then you're not doing it. Because as you deliberately pull against the inner thighs to inner thighs, you start to get much more adductor activation, in other words, the inside knee muscles, inside groin area muscles, all those muscles that track you from the pubic bone to the inside of the knee. Come and stay, breathe. Exhale, squeeze tighter and go down an inch. Inhale, release up an inch. Breathe out, squeeze the legs tighter, down an inch and up an inch. Keep this going for five more. Every time your pelvic floor pulls up, pull your inner thighs adductors in. When your pelvic floor pulls up, pull the inner thighs in. And pelvic floor adductors up, inner thighs in. And you can feel it, can't you? I can. Two more. One more. And come all the way up to tippy toes and lower the heels down. You're going to step a bit further away from your bar and then lean, um, bending the knees and the angling of the hip. Take your leg nearest your screen behind you. Keep your upper body centered on your chair and then pull the heel to the bottom. Familiar exercise, we've done it regularly. Pull that knee in, breathing in, breathe out and push the heel to the ceiling. Inhale to slide the knees back to each other, breath out, push. Obviously you're pushing against the heel of the standing leg and you're using the hands to lead to your armpits of the support for the bar. My position shows all of the right angles and the activity is in the standing leg as well as the hamstring of the leg that's moving away from the standing thigh and up. Now keep it up. Here's where you do eight pulses. So we go eight, seven, six. Keep the breathing for four, for three, for two, for one. Pull the legs back. Now exhale and open, inhale and pull back. Keep equal push against the bar with both hands. And yes, you're allowed to let there be some rotation of the trunk, not of the hip, but of the whole trunk. So that the leg that's pushing as you go down and up is opening you out at the hip. So you've got that kind of um, V shape happening between thigh to thigh. The pelvis is staying true it's the legs that create the shape and your armpit. Okay, two more. And last one and stay. Oh my word, this is horrible. 
lift and lift and lift for six, five, breathing four, breathing two, hello Carrie, breathing one, and come down. Turn and face me, people, we haven't finished yet, I need to show you a slightly different influence. Come onto your um, bent elbow, pull the leg up and pull these in. You're going to push away and away and the waist as you pull the hip up and the knee up and pull a strong arm down will get you right into your obliques. Your standing leg is slightly bent. There's a slight influence forwards here so you've got that hinge, no tucking under for four more. Strong. Three more. Strong. Two more. Last time. And go. Oh my goodness, that was really hard. You've got your other side. So here we go. I'm going to go to the other side of the room for this. You don't need to change sides, it's so you can see me. Go into your squat. Okay. Once you're in your squat, shrink the tongue and send your leg away. Traditionally, we've done this many times, so now you're on the other leg. It's your left leg or your leg nearest the screen if you've switched sides. Exhale it, then find your heel to your seat. Inhale, the leg comes together. Breathe out, it pushes up. Breathing in and inhale, the thighs are together. Breath out, they reach up. Inhale, they come. Exhale, they go up. Your aim at this point is to keep your pelvis in neutral, your trunk stability absolutely working on all those postural muscles, the standing leg slightly bent, the load is through the heel, you're feeling the connection with the hamstring and glute on both legs. Stay. Are you ready for your eight? Seven, six, five, no movement of the spine, keep your rib cage drawn towards the belly button, navel to spine. Refuse to let this happen in your lower back. This has to be hamstring glute. Two more. One more and pull your thighs together. Are you ready? Open and close. As smooth as that. Remember I said it's your trunk that opens. You may get the sense of one armpit, the one of the standing leg, taking the connection. Make it appear effortless. Now, if you start to get this into your lower back, you're twisting more than you're using your legs. When I say twisting, I mean you're starting to twist your sacrum, your pelvic connection. Are you ready with this one? We're going to stay. Make sure you feel comfortable. If you need to hinge more or, connect or change something, you've got to stay here. You can point your toe if you want as you lift. It has to be in the standing leg, side bottom, side thigh, Nothing to do with your sacrum, nor your lumbar spine. Obviously your pelvic floor is drawing right up. You've got three more. Two more. Smile. One more. And up you stand. Change of influence. Same leg working though. Slight bend at the standing leg. Pull this heel up, this knee in. Pulling these areas together and push. Inhale. Exhaling. Get your hip and your thigh to lift. Hip and thigh. Standing legs, staying strong but not locked out. As you pull down with strong arms, imagine you're pulling something down from the ceiling. You're pulling forwards of your trunk, not sideways, forwards to get these obliques. Standing legs, side bottom working, obliques working, flexors working, a tiny bit of turnout. Breathe. Last two, feel the obliques, if you can't feel the obliques, you're doing it wrong, you're tucking under, and let that go. Okay, to finish your sequence here, turn to face your bar again, go to turn out, we're doing very well. In turn out, everything shrinks and hollows. You can feel everything working through the inner thigh. Stay in position in turn out, and then start to pick up to tiptoes. So you're going up and down. Tippy toes, up you go. Because of everything you've done so far, your inside of the thigh should be working really hard. Squeeze your heels and feel the inside of your thigh muscles connecting you to your core. Shrink and hollow, it's a pelvic floor nail to the spine. 
Every part of your posture now is alive and your breathing keeps you connected. The lowering the lift at this time. Keep the heels squeezing and pull your knees as wide out as you can and then send the posture back into turnout straight. Inhale, squeeze your heels as you take your thighs wide open, pelvis stays truly neutral. Breathe out as you suck everything up and in. Inhaling down you go. The, the spine is neutral, you're in a straight back plie. And we go down, wide, 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 open, 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 and up. Inhaling down, 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 and stay. Stay here and see if you can open and open. I have limited range to go further than I am, but by asking it of my body, feeling as though I'm pulling my knees wider and out, kind of out backwards here, I can feel a lot of the area, the inside of the knee. It's a strengthener, people. It's strengthened. Now add the end range. Relax through the head, neck and shoulders, but keep your core strong. Keep the breath, the height, the inner ballerina for four, for three, for two, and elegantly up you go and lower down. To finish off this moment, step away from your bar. Angle at the hip, it's the hinge position that we do at the studio. Let your head go down. If you need to bend your legs, but right now, everyone, even in this position, there should be hamstrings. We'll cat stretch here, so my elbows bent, my arms are bent. I breathe out, pelvic tilt, rounding the spine. I end up looking at my knees, and you can see my back's rounded. Breathe in and hydrate the space, and then breathing out again, I send the seat away, and I start to look at the object that I'm holding onto. No pain, no shearing forces, big breath in. I'm in as much extension as my body allows. Finally, exhale, pelvic tilt, curling, rolling spine, rolling, rolling, rolling. And as you roll, continue the roll till you find yourself coming all the way back up. We've just got time. I'm going to move the chair, as it were. We just have time for um, a couple more exercises on the floor to supplement and finish you off, basically. Standing with your feet parallel, big breath in. Reach, and then on the exhale, forwards bend the ribcage part of the spine. Bend off of the knees as you roll down as if over a beach ball. Big breath in as you get there. Breathing out, finding your plank. And now that you're in plank, guess what? Upwards you go into the equivalent of down dog, press your heels down as far as they'll go, pick up and pull forwards again. This is your basic position, you're going up, bending the ribcage spine, press your heels down and pull forwards. If you're happy, you can now go up, send a leg to the sky, stay on tiptoes, and as you come down, pull that knee under you, and up, reach, Pull forwards and down, or just do straight forward three quarter plank to extend, which is what I showed yesterday. One more on this leg, and then return the foot to the floor, staying tiptoes, other leg. It pushes the ground away, and you pull the knee forwards, chest is between the hands, and you send the ground away. You pull the ground to you. Up the ground to you. One more. Up. Pull the ground to you. And both feet down. Lower the knees down. And let the body reach into a form of child's pose. Breathe deep in and out. In and out. And you're ready to seat. We're going to sit up to roll down. If you've had enough, that's fine. Whichever way we're going into our abdominal moment, I haven't got long, I appreciate that. So to allow the body to roll back, and then pull the heels um, so that they're under your knees. Get your spine connected, make sure you remove any knots behind you in your clothing, Tanya. You're breathing deeply in and out. 
Find a gentle imprint of your lumbar. Remember, if you want to use a head pad, that's always a possibility. With the next breath out, keeping your imprint, bring them into tabletop and then take them to turn out. So I've pulled my knees away from each other, kept my toes together, I'm in turn out. Can you see my legs? They're in turn out. There you go. Once you're in turn out, stay. Breathe, you're in imprint. Exhale, curl up. And then inhale, love the turned out legs down. Exhale, pull them back up again. And inhale, roll back down the head, neck and shoulders. Breathe out, curl. Breathe in, lower down, keeping navel to spine. Breathe out to pull back up and breathe in to lay the spine down. If you want to gently roll, holding onto the sides of the thighs, staying in turn up, stay in imprint, pull the legs back, and down you go. Exhaling. Inhale to lower. Exhale, lift, and inhale back down. All right, exhale, curl and stay. Inhale, lower, and exhale, roll down and lift. Inhale, curl and stay. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift and roll down. Exhale, curl and lower. Keep them together now. Inhale, back down you roll and lift. Inhaling. Exhale. Look at your feet. Look at your feet. Lay the spine down. Look at your feet. Look at your feet and pull the knees in. Send your legs straight. Take the hands behind the head. Uh, my abs are killing me from the previous two days activity, which is rather nice. Exhale now, you're no, no longer an imprint, but you're trying to keep your pelvis neutral. Curl to breathe up. Sorry, curl to breathe, breathe out and curl up. Now, in this position here, it's all abdominals. I'm gonna pull one knee in, turn to that knee, Send that leg away. Pull the other leg in. Turn. Send the leg away. Turn. Send the leg away. Breathing in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Stay curled. Keeping the pubic bone pulling under the navel in my brain. So that sense of constant connection. And... Once more each side. Last time. Leave the legs straight and reach your arms back. Big breath in. You know what's coming to sit up, don't you? Inhale the arms to the ceiling and exhale. And find your form. Going forwards and upwards into a forwards flex of everything that is a stretch. Breathe deeply in and out. Shrink the tummy. Shrink the tummy and sit up really tall. All right, your final activity, which is part stretch and part um, activation of upper body. Put your left ankle onto your right straight leg. You've already leant backwards. Then bend that leg and lift. We're going to lift and lower to remind the upper back stability system to stay symmetrically activated. So your alignment, you're staring straight ahead Open the hip and lower, breathing deeply in and out. Your collarbones at the ends of a smile going from mid sternum all the way to a completely open shoulder and down you come. Stretch out the leg, sit up really tall, cleavage the sky can, other foot here and bend the leg and we go up, symmetry and down. You've got a simultaneous glute stretch along with an activation in um, back upper back work back of the upper arm work with the trunk stability system with a single leg activation of hamstring glutes it's known as a compound exercise in the trade down we go hinging up we go rolling you have one more and up pull yourself down and have your final ragdoll reach. Allow the body to become relaxed, toes relax, your abdomen rolled towards your thighs, your head hanging, neck relaxing, 
And as you breathe out, float up. And you know what? That is all we have time for today. And Steve Davis or Kate's watching as well. So Steve was obviously lured into the room by the inner ballerina quote. Well done, people. I'm glad you got your tutus out, if only for me. I enjoyed that. I hope you did. It's kind of it's a bit different, isn't it, to kind of chase away everything that isn't. And we know that this is. You should have felt every part of you alive. And that workout can be added to. Um, there's more for me to add to it. If you're wanting more, then tune in tomorrow. Apart from this, it's a goodbye from me and a thank you again for sticking with us in this lockdown. Um, but we're far from locked down in these moments. I'll see some of you later on Zoom and it's the hottest day, which Wednesday tends to be hottest day ever. So it's a goodbye from me and speak to me about what you loved doing. <laughs> Someone said I'm going to explode with heat. I understand, I really do. Take care everybody and keep living well.